this mess. <laughs> Untimely death, fear and vast emptiness await us as we travel to Merseyside. Holy sh I've brought my team to the biggest building we will have ever investigated. Welcome to Most Haunted and Camel Laird. The site has seen shipbuilding for over 200 years. William Laird, a Scottish entrepreneur, oversaw its expansion to include five dry docks and this forms the core of the present yard. At the beginning of the 1900s, Laird Brothers, as it had become, merged with a Sheffield steelmaker, Charles Camel & Co, to become the world-renowned company of Camel Laird. As well as building liners for Cunard, including the Mauritania, the yard constructed many craft for the Royal Navy, from submarines to aircraft carriers. In its working life, it launched well over 1,100 vessels into the Mersey. Sadly, its glory days of shipbuilding are gone, and with its offices left as though the occupants evaporated into thin air, it is little wonder that many tales abound that defy explanation, from sudden drops in temperature, strange sights and sounds, and reported sightings of dark figures who seem to be able to walk through walls and haunt the vast expanse of the yard. With so many places and such a large area to investigate, we thought we'd get a head start. And so I asked Kieran and Ian Cash to spend last night alone and in the dark here. And this is what happened. The one thing I can tell you about this place is it's very easy to get lost. Thanks. That's all right. Should you just explore down here a bit? I want something to happen, basically. I always do on any investigation, I want something to happen. Don't look through the camera for a minute and just look at it with your, with your naked eye. I mean, hold the camera right. roughly. Is there anybody in here with us? Is there anybody here with us now? What was that? Was that, was that, did you just make? I, I, I panned my arm like that. It's calm down, mate. <laughs> I'm all right, I'm all right. Is that us echoing or did you hear those voices? What? Was that, was that just, was that our voices echoing? I could have sworn I heard talking. The problem is with this place is that we're going to get an absolute load of silly noises out there, aren't we? But like that. Boy, it'll just be the wind shaking the walls and stuff. There's that much metal machinery on walls, isn't there? Yeah, are you stealing my job now, are you? That's exactly what I should be saying. Oh, sorry, OK, I'm... Uh, I'm, I'm looking around, hearing all these noises, <laughs> and you're saying, well, of course, we're going to be getting these silly noises, but there's me going, what was that, what was that? This is Ian and Kieran signing off from Alone in the Dark. Here in the construction hall, the ghostly figure of a man in blue overalls wearing a flat cap has been seen many times. He doesn't confine himself to one area, as he's seen all over this massive structure. But who is he? And who are the many nameless spirits that haunt Camel Laird? We have 24 hours to find out. afternoon one of my colleagues had just come from the kitchen area um, and as he's walking through the corridor seeing a lady an old lady walking through which is unusual because we normally have a lot of business guys in um, as he got to the reception area no one there at all many strange happenings are said to occur here in this corridor many figures have been witnessed wandering its length and one has been seen moving from the fax room through the wall and into the boardroom some people complain of being touched by unseen hands. One employee was so shaken by the experience 
that she quickly left the corridor and entered the boardroom, only to see two dark shadows emerging through the wall. These offices were specifically constructed for the design and engineering teams working on two of Britain's nuclear submarines and would have been a hive of activity in their day. But now they're nothing more than a sad reminder of what went before. But this place isn't as deserted as it would first have you believe, as not all the ex-employees seem to have left. Dark figures have been witnessed slowly walking around this whole area. A strong presence has also been felt and the staircases leading up from the ground floor are thought to have an entity that opens and shuts doors with regular occurrence. Given the nature of Camel Laird and its history, what would Dr Kieran O'Keefe expect of the coming investigation? So Kieran, here we are in another horrible location. It really isn't pleasant at all. I'm not looking forward to tonight. No, and also it's going to be an investigation of two halves. We've essentially got two buildings that look very, very different, but on their own, they are very, very eerie. I think it's going to be a very scary investigation on the whole. Some of the apparitions that are actually seen in the office buildings, they're quite modern apparitions, aren't they? I'm not surprised that they're modern apparitions. They may be actually associated with this building. What is more surprising is the history of the land on which this building is. I mean, we're talking about the grounds of kind of a, a monastic area. There was a, a priory here very early on in history. And so you would have thought that some of the apparitions may be monks. In the construction building, it's particularly eerie because it's such a huge, vast space. And the weather conditions are atrocious outside. I mean, it's gale force winds, the doors are rattling. The problem for me with the construction hall is if there is a sound, because of the vastness of it, it's going to be very difficult to locate the source of it. And I guarantee that we're going to get door slamming tonight. I have to say, we've both been here before. We did an investigation for our book. It's a frightening, frightening place to be. I did it once, I couldn't go anywhere on my own. So I just know that we're in for one heck of a night. Definitely. The time had come for David Wells to give his initial insight on Camel Laird. Would his connection with the Royal Navy give him particular affinity with the shipyard? He's trying to tell someone what's happened. Graham, if you are here, if there's a spirit or if any astrals here, could you make a sound? <laughs> that was me. If you need our help, we need yours. He's right here. He's yes. absolutely right here. Holy sh The most haunted team have come to Merseyside to investigate the supposed paranormal activity at the Camel Laird shipyard and David Wells began his initial reading in the old administrative offices. Well, this is comfortable. This doesn't look scary, does it? No, it doesn't. It looks a bit like a waiting room or something. Yeah. Looks can be deceptive, though, can't they? Oh, right. Shall we go in here? Yeah, so sure. Okay. Reason I brought you all here today. It's a bit <laughs> like that, isn't it? Um, you've got to try, or the obvious prompt, you've got to try and get below. Mm -hmm. below. I'm trying just to get to people, not, mm -hmm. not places. Places aren't interesting to me. Um, it's a very... When you, when you go onto the astral level here, it's very whispery. It's very... Um, very quiet, very shadowy. Do you know what I mean? It's yes. kind of like a... Um, there's nothing, wah, there's nothing like, yeah, none of that going on. <laughs> it's all a bit, um, it's almost like when they're moving, I can see them moving around and it's very quick and they're gone, very shadowy and they've gone. So who, who is it that's been causing phenomena in here? There, there are two characters that I'm aware of. One is coming from further down, which is a female character moving up and down the corridor. There's one male figure, he's quite a dominant figure and quite portly, and I'm not sure what time he's from. Maybe early 19th century. He's quite portly, very well dressed. Um, 
quite bossy. And maybe, you see, maybe, maybe whatever was here, because this looks quite new to me, mm -hmm. so maybe what was here before he's, he's acting out that. Let's move on then, yeah? Mm. Encouraged by David's early findings, we move through the offices to the first floor. I've got here a runner. Oh. I don't mean someone no. making the team things. I mean, I've got a someone who moves very quickly around here. Um, don't know if people hear it, but they might certainly see an outline. Um, I don't know what he's running for or running away from. But he is quite strong. He's certainly stronger than downstairs. You said he. Yeah, male. Def definitely a male. He's okay. def it's definitely a male. He has a really modern name. I've only got the first name at the moment, and the modern name is, is Graham. Okay. So we've got Graham. Can't can't get to the surname. And how, what time period? And how old is he? He's probably he's probably around again. Seventies. That's time period, mm -hmm. not age. Mm -hmm. uh, age wise. Oh, okay. 35, 36, and he's killed in a car crash. So there's death in a car crash because I felt that impact on me as a car hit me. I felt a car hit me. So why does that bring him here? Yes. That's my question. Yeah. Why would he come here? Yeah. Even if he worked here, you know, when I pass, no offence, but I'm not going to be haunting the offices of, yeah. of anywhere, you know, I'm going to, yeah. you know. Um, I think he might be trying to tell people it happened. Oh. When, when they get hit, and it wumps. What happens is the astral body gets shoved out. He's trying to tell someone what's happened. The, the first thing that comes to my mind is that they may not have got who did it. So there may have been, I need to tell you who it was. It may be, that might, I'll be honest, the impression I get is that it's someone he knew. Right. Okay, some, it was somebody he knew. Is it worth calling out for him while we're just standing up here? Um, yeah, let's, let's try. Do I think it's a good try? idea. Graham, if you are here, if there's a spirit or if any astrals here, could you make a sound? Oh, there was a tap. Blimey. A loud one. No, it was right here. Yeah, it was. Thank you. If your name was Graham or is Graham, beg your pardon, could you tap twice for me? Yes. We need you to show us some physical evidence. <gasps> Just seen something flit across the back there. Oof, really quickly. Really well, you quickly. Asked for really, it. really quickly. Graham, was that you? Did I just see you? Maybe yeah. he was running off. Yeah. yeah. Well, should, we, should we carry on yeah, walking around there? If that's yeah. in the direction he was at. Yeah. He knows what we're here for then. And he, because he's, it's, it's an older, or, sorry, younger ghost. He will know what cameras are. He will of know television. He will, yeah. He yeah. So is it just Graham you've got up here? Yeah, he's, there's a one very strong one up here on this level. And this is Graham. Yeah. I don't know if you mentioned it earlier on, but this rushing around is because that's what he was doing while he was living, or because he's just going in and out of this plane and another plane or something. Well, like no, that? he's. He, I think when it, when it when the event actually happened, he tried to tell people, so he would have rushed. He would have come in here, and he would have rushed. It happened near here. So it didn't happen like miles away. It happened so it could close have been to here. on the way to work yeah. or on the way back from yeah. work. Yeah, and he would have rushed around trying to get. He would have been in people's faces trying to, you know, it would have been that whole thing where he's trying to touch them and his hands going. Right. And imagine the frustration if if nobody can see you. And you it's know? still that kind of frantic rushing around. Yeah, that around. frantic movement. Okay, but I have why to tell would he somebody. If he knows that nobody's here anymore, why would he be still rushing around? He's. I think he's just got caught, and that's how he moves about here. People have seen dark figures here, mm. so that's him rushing around because he knows there are still people yeah. walking around, whether it's security, whether right. it's other investigators, yeah. whether it's us. So the rushing around is him trying to grab our attention, It does perhaps. fit, doesn't it, with the, with the dark shadows. A lot of people have seen dark shadows here. And do they see them move very quickly? Do they, do they move away quickly? Yeah, there's, yes. So they don't Although loiter. In a different area. We'll go into a different area and see the story there, but right. certainly in this area there are reports of that sort of corner right. of the eye. Shall we turn all the lights off now and... Go somewhere else? Yeah, I think we should. Yeah. Excited now. I am too. With David already feeling the energy from what seemed to be an untimely death, we felt the time was right to switch to night vision. 
we began in the eerie vastness of the cavernous construction hall. Right, David. Tell us who's in here. It's huge. There's, um... There's one astral who is um, an older man. He's um, obviously a, a he's a worker. He's an overall, so he's a he's in dirty overall. So yeah. he's, he's an older guy, and he's he's telling me. I think he's saying to me he's been here since he was an apprentice. So he'd obviously this would have been his life, I guess. Yeah. Right. Um, I think he died probably around the. Actually, I think it might even be as late as 80s. Really? That's when he died. Right. And he was here from when? Well, he was here, I think, from from what he's saying, probably the 60s, the 50s, 60s. Okay. I, think, I think he did die of an accident, and I can feel the side of his head gone. Right. The side of his head's bashed. Not just bashed, gone completely. So he must have fallen from some height. Right. Because the side of his head is completely shattered. Oh, God. Which would have what would, what would have killed him. Yeah. I can't get dates when that happened, but I guess it would be... If it, if it was here to the 80s, it would be in the 80s. Yeah. Let's keep oh, walking. Yeah, but he's wandering about. He's wandering about. Does, what, yeah. Can you see what he looks like? He's, he's, um, he's not overly tall. He's about this, about this high. Yeah. Got a little bit of the tummy on him, but he's, yeah. not, he's not fat by any stretch of imagination. I would say he's losing a bit of hair. Um, just wearing, he's just wearing overalls and boots, blue overalls and a pair of boots. And is he here now? He's, he's communicating with me, which say he's here, but I'm not feeling... When I feel a strong presence, I can physically feel them. A clear mm -hmm. sense, in, you know, I feel them. Yeah. So I can't feel that. So he's obviously communicating from a... There's a distance still. OK. When you say he, he, some, he either fell or something, you know, something happened to the side mm. of his face, can you see the area or can he show you in your mind's eye where he would have fallen from or where the accident would have come happened? I'd probably go further that side okay. and go to that side. Well, well, should we go up? Should okay. we go? I'd like to yeah. go up because okay. we're here. Let's okay. try this. So we've come into a sort of like a big long porter cabin where I suppose they used to have their offices in here. Yeah. And this to me is, I hate this bit. It's a bit. Yeah. Very odd, isn't it? It's just not nice. It feels odd as well because you know you're high up as well. There's one name that keeps coming back to me, and I hate when I get a name that is, do you know what I mean? It's such a generic name, oh. uh, it's, which is George, and it's such a, you know, every ghost called bloody George. It drives me mental, but there's no reason why it couldn't have been his no. name. Yeah, of course not. But it keeps coming back, so I'm going to go with that for the time being. George, OK. Let's go with George, and then see if I can get a surname or a letter okay. or something. If you can hear me, please, can you knock twice for yes and once for no? Is your name George? I heard something faint then. Did anybody else hear it? There's two. Two, so George, okay. Hello, George. Did you fall from a great height? What was that? One. I only heard one. Me too. I thought I heard two, but I heard two. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> what was that? I think it was my foot, was it that? No. No? What's here? I, I, I moved my foot. It was like it? somebody going... <laughs> <laughs> that definitely Sorry. wasn't me. We're clearing their sinuses or... I don't know. It was just... I can't... It frightened me because it was just... It wasn't your foot. It was... I can't explain it. OK. George, are you still here with us? Tap twice if you're still here. I wasn't here. OK, it's a little bit spooked here. Why? Because this is what I've got him doing. Oh, God. He's, I hate walking into him like this. He's right here. He's is absolutely he? right here. Watch <gasps> us. Hang on. Let What's me flick that? back to... What's that? Oh, my God. Get... What is that? That could be his reflection. No way. That's not his reflection. Reflecting off what? Move your other arm. Your right Excuse arm. Excuse me, we're going to move up. Yeah, it is your reflection. Move again. 
There's a head poking out from behind him. Yeah, there is. He's right behind him. If it is a head, I don't know. Oh, my God, look at that. Over his left shoulder, that one. Do you see where I'm looking? Yeah, here. Yeah, because the one on the right-hand side is his reflection. That one's his reflection, isn't so it? So who's that there? He's right, he's right beside one. He's right on me. He's kind of over, over Oh, my me. God. George, if you can hear me, can you move? J just wave your arms or something. He's tapping. Yeah. This is so difficult, isn't it, to see? Yeah, but that's definitely... Some an outline, thing isn't it, or something, or over or over your um, left, shoulder. left shoulder? I can tell you, it's a heavy smoker because I can feel the chest is really heaving, chest really heaving. He's tapping. He's agreeing with you. So what are you saying? That's frightening. You're spooked. I'm spooked because he's so strong in this corner. He was like, I could, pra I could practically see him when we came in the room. I could almost see him. He's so strong. Wow. George, do you need our help? OK. George, you will get our help. David will help you. So he must be here all the time, then? Yeah, I think he is here all the time. Oh, poor man. Do you think he's no, capable of, of, of making a noise or moving something? I think so, yeah. He's very strong here. He's very strong here. It's making my chest heave, I can tell you Is that. He? Yeah, just stepping away a little bit, just so I don't... You've got a coin. George, I'm going to throw a coin. Perhaps you could throw something back or something personal of yours. Could you throw it back to us so that we know that you're really here? OK, can you throw it back or throw something personal of yours to us? George, please, if you need our help, we need yours. Can you hear me? You Is right, Stuart? Here? Yeah, I thought I saw something in the corner near that window. Something just caught caught my attention and it was, I don't know, it was like a shadow going across the window. It was in that corner. In this next room just here? Yeah, where that window was where I'm pointing to now. Yeah, because he's yeah. not out in this room. Please, George, we need your help. We promise we won't leave here without helping you. Can you make a noise or... Let's see your footsteps. Do you think he's capable of this? Yeah, I do. Come on, then. Shall we walk back out? Normally things happen when yeah. you're kind of walking back out, shall we? Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. All right. With David's strong sense of two astral beings being present within the location, what more would be revealed to us over the coming hours at Camel Laird? Holy shh! Whoa! Hello? This poor man so needs our help. The investigation of Camel Laird was already proving eventful as we seemed to be provoking all manner of strange phenomena and making contact with the spiritual energy of its previous occupants. What more would we learn as the night wore on? This poor man so needs our help. Don't trust this man, he's just killed me. <gasps> oh my God. Whoa! Hello? David, Kath, Carl and myself gathered for a seance in an attempt to learn more of the unfortunate spirit who gave the impression of being a victim of a hit-and-run accident and who seemed unable to shake its earthbound confines. I just saw something moving over there, left to right. So did I. Graham, if that's you, move closer. Please don't be scared. Come closer, and if you've got something to say to us, say it to us. Please do something physical, something we can see. 
but we can all see Is that table shaking. Yeah. Okay, that's a good thing. If you're here with us now or close to us, I think we know you're here. But if you're close to us, please try and do something else for us. Oh. You all right? Oh. Oh, sorry, Graham. I'm li I'm here. For, I'm listen. I, I'm listening. Tell me something. Tell David so he can tell us. If you can't speak out loud, something just definitely touched me on the shoulder, and it was icy cold. Well, let me give you just the the little words and the things I'm getting because it's very disjointed. The only thing I've got is it was a cortina that hit him. Oh. A brown one. Oh, bless his heart. Come on, just give me little bits more, little bits. Is this make a, a picture. table moving, or is it just a? It's moving. Come on. It's moving. Yeah. Okay. A brown cortina. I think it might have been someone senior in the office. <gasps> Was it covered up? Well, it's someone who's known they've done it and just come back to work. <gasps> no. Oh. That's awful. He's come here and tried to... That's when he was grabbing people. I've gone freezing cold. But when he's grabbing people, he's trying to tell the people around the the, the boss, isn't he? Yeah. Don't trust this man. He's just killed me. Yeah, it could be that. Yeah, absolutely. It certainly seems someone senior that, that hit him and just drove off. You didn't work here, did you? Tap once for no. Can you tap on the table? Tap once for no. You didn't work here, did you? It was one tap over there, wasn't it? I want to, um... I want to go to that... Is that an office there? Just behind yes. you, Johnny, on the left. There's yeah. a kitchen. There. There's an office next to No, the office no. next to it. Where? Yes, there is an office yeah. next to it. It's just, I want to go... You know, that that's where he's pulling me towards. Let's that go office. in there, then. Well, I mean, that's what he's saying the guy's office is. <laughs> Oh. Holy sh You all right, Carl? No, I'm scared shitless. But we were asking him for, to push, push a filing cabinet over, weren't we? Sorry, I've just fallen over that desk then. OK. All right. I was here, I was here and I just jumped straight into, the, into this. I'm wondering something. What? what? I could be going on the conspiracy thing here and I might be going too deep. The guy who killed him, mm. is there a possibility that he's dead and he's still trying to cover it up and he's one of the figures that's here? That sent a shiver down my spine thinking about it. Well, I'm just wondering whether that was... If that's somebody pushed you, that stopped us going into that office where that you... That wasn't friendly Graham, was it? Graham, was that you that pushed the cabinet over? No. Just one. Just one, no. So, so is there another spirit that did it? There must have been. Mm, there must have been, yeah. Was that two taps yeah. then? Yeah. Two taps, OK. Is Carl right? Is the spirit that pushed the cabinet over the man that killed you in the brown cortina? Yeah. Yeah. This poor man. Some <laughs> had gone and smashed into him and never came forward. Drove and drove off. That's, that's disgusting. I just went to work. He just went to work. Mm, definitely, de definitely on the way to work. And maybe that's why this other soul is here, because he's so frightened of moving Guilt. on. Guilt. Mm. This poor man so needs our help. Eager for further connection with the spirits that haunt the site, we split into separate groups. Carl and Stuart going to the officers, Ian and John forming another vigil whilst Kieran and myself took ourselves away from them to another part of the vast complex. Yvette and myself are doing the downstairs corridor and we're trying to break the cynicism of the rest of the team. Yeah. Because with all the lights on, it looks very, very comfortable. Very, very... It's just very calm. Uh, it doesn't look creepy at all. And even with the lights on, we know what it looks like, but it's a place where a lot of phenomena... Oh, report. oh, I've just seen a, f a flashing light go right across um, just got it at the end of the corridor.
this was one of his offices in here. That was his office, yeah. Cortina man's office. Yeah. Are you here? Come on. You wanted to show, to talk to us earlier, show us a sign you were here. Do something now. If there's anybody here, perhaps you could maybe rattle this trolley with teacups on it. Maybe you could push one of the teacups off the trolley to let us know that you're around. Come on. Oh shit, oh it's <laughs> tip. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm scared as well, Wigan. It's just deathly quiet now, yeah. isn't it? Oh, it's a mug. There's a mug there. Is that it? No, hand glove it. All right, is that friendly, Graham? I can hear it tapping. It's very faint and it's around us. On the front, so it's literally On from the floor. the floor. Around us. Very, very faint. Yep. And the light on on the uh, on floor level. Did you just get it? Yeah. You got a light? Kind of a um, uh, a pinprick of light yeah, across the floor. Really? Can you imagine me sat in here guilt ridden? What were the fumes that were going through you there? Come on, you've won us out. Shut, frighten us out. Put one of these windows through. Slam the door shut. Come on. He's not so cocky when there's two people, is he? Is this the other staircase? No. Mm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> 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 you scared the shit out of us. The killer took to carpenters. No way. What did I say? We were around. Kieran, yeah. What did I say? You said, can you th can you uh, move or throw the throw, throw a, cup? a cup? You're joking. No. <laughs> I said that. Yeah, said it. <gasps> Well, we got, yeah, it was the mug with the handle smashed off and nearly just missed us. You're joking! That's exactly what I've had said. Would Carl and Stuart experience further activity back in the offices? Well, my skin feels very prickly now since I've walked in. Does it? Yeah, and itchy and I don't know if there's something in there. Do you hear that? It's... Yeah, it's that footsteps. Who's it? Who's it? Who's it? Let's go. Is one there? I don't know. It's like I know because I know there's like. There's light bleeding through, you can see that. Mm. But it was almost like, um, if you just hold that camera. Whoa! Hello? What the f that shit me right up, that. Sorry, I have my torch on that straight away. Hello? My heart's going like mad. David? He just walked there. He just walked. See where that light is there? Yeah. About 10 foot further down there, and he walked towards it. All right, we're actually outside now, me and Cal. We're actually going back to the crew room. But no one's walked to see if Wells is in there now. I've just seen you. What? I he's, saw he's you. He's been here for 10 minutes. And just as we were walking through, I said, oh, hang on, there's David, because I just, I just saw you, you walk. No. And waited, shouted, you weren't there. I've been here ages. Shot, shot, shot my, my torch. You'd have had to have just, you'd have had to have come back within the last, well. We've been sitting here for five minutes and you were We ran, right we there. ran out of that side door because it was quicker to run from that door than it was to come out of the other one. I've been here ages. Our separate vigils had seen further poltergeist activity and the amazing light phenomena. Could more be goaded before the night was over? Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. What? Camel Led 
Woods seemed to be alive with activity and the team joined together in the hope of getting further knowledge of the sad spirit of Graham and offering him help. I can't feel as if there's people, someone... You've got, would you put your hand on me, on me then? Me? No. No, no nobody's near. Do you got my hands in my pocket. Did you touch you? I didn't touch you. Even nobody's near, you can. I seriously had somebody, like, do that on my shoulder. Is oh, that yeah. you, Graham? That was really weird. I even felt my coat go down. Cry, yeah. Come on, if you hear me, one of these locker doors shut. Oh, did you hear that? Oh, was that, that someone's stomach? No, it wasn't mine. It was like a... Uh, I had that. Yeah, it was a... Uh, yeah, that's exactly what I had. Just move one of these filing cabinets if you can. That's horrible, isn't it? You went last night, didn't you? It was yeah, this one. Yeah, here. That was a door. It was a door? It sounded like it, didn't it? Sounded like something being chucked, didn't it? Yeah. OK, let's go back in. Oh. Come on. That's weird. What is that? Some sort of... Is it a rivet? Is it a... You can touch I'm it now. We can yeah, touch yeah. it. Is it warm to touch? Yeah, but there's one No, it's, it's cold. It's not like hot, boiling hot. It's cold as well. That's a valve. That's colder. That's a, yeah, that's oh, colder. Oh, I missed the ghost. Yeah. No, it's just you know when you know when you get touched and it kind of f with your mind. Yeah. <laughs> it's done that. <laughs> what it f yeah, what the f is that? Oh, it's what? No, it was not. It was a. Oh. What did you hear? What did you hear? It was a. Oh. I never heard it. No. I didn't hear it. I must have. Oh, f can we go? Can we go? That was horrible. Was that not horrible? Yeah, I heard that really loud. That, was, that definitely wasn't any of you guys. No, 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 no I definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> what the f was that? That was a real. Good that night. was horrible. I'm sure it wasn't until someone no. stopped crumbling. Do you think you got that? I didn't hear it. Oh. Was it, it wasn't me opening You must have got it, because it would be on my microphone. Yeah, if you had it, it probably was. It went, ooh. It, went, ooh. Ooh. it was horrible. Well, it. God, it seems quite nice out here, doesn't it, compared to... Yeah. Oh! What was that? What was it? It was right between me and Wigan. Was that fine? It was that. What's that? That's what it was. So wait a minute. We've had this guttural, low, horrible, mm. and then this has just happened. We've had that bolt thrown at us. Is somebody following us then? <gasps> Listen. Listen. Through us, it got loud because it, it got did, it did, yeah. Oh, my God, see that, did it? Uh, it's right by us. How would Dr. Kieran O'Keefe make sense of all that we had undergone during our investigation of Camel Laird Shipyard? Camel Aird in Birkenhead was an exciting location to investigate for the Most Haunted team because Yvette and myself had been there on an earlier investigation and also it's a location where over 300 hours of investigation by a local group had been conducted. In terms of phenomena that had actually occurred there on the night we investigated, there are a couple of key moments. Earlier on in the night, in a vigil, a filing cabinet appeared to crash down on the floor, apparently of its own accord. Oh. Holy shit! Oh, 
thought I'd just fallen over that desk then. Now, because we don't have full coverage of every member of the team, we cannot discount the possibility that somebody on the team could have accidentally dislodged a filing cabinet, put it off balance, or anything of that nature. Later on, vigils were conducted with smaller groups. John and Ian were upstairs in the office part. Graham, if you're still here, give us a sign. Whilst Yvette and myself were downstairs in the main office corridor. Yvette and myself were calling out for whoever the spirit was to show themselves, to answer us, to communicate in some way. And then, given that there was a tea trolley very close to us, Yvette actually asked for the spirit to move or throw a teacup. Please, just, just knock one of the teacups off. No phenomena of any great significance happened on that particular vigil. However, what was interesting is, at the same time, Ian and John, upstairs in the office part, actually had a teacup thrown in their direction. They were at the far end, close to the filing cabinets. And what is interesting for a skeptic, for a believer, for anybody watching this particular sequence of events, is that it appears as though Yvette calling out for phenomena actually results in the phenomena occurring elsewhere in the building. Is this paranormal? Or, with a skeptical hat, are we looking at something that's just coincidental? At the end of the investigation, Yvette and Carl actually decided that there should be a large group go and investigate every particular room at Camelaird. In the shipyard building, almost as though we were about to leave, uh, an object was thrown in our direction. This one. Oh, that was a door. It was a door? It sounded like it, didn't it? Kind of like something we'd chucked, didn't it? Yeah. In addition to this, there are a number of other bangs, and I think there are a couple of other, other objects that were thrown later on in that same vigil. Again, and the viewer is probably getting bored of me giving this particular sceptical explanation. For us to assess it as truly paranormal evidence, we need to capture it objectively on video camera. We don't have that objective evidence, in my view. All in all, Camelaird was a great location to investigate. The phenomena that we did capture and that the team placed most significance on was of paramount interest simply because it didn't actually tie in with any previous eyewitness testimony. And so for that reason, I do treat the evidence with a great amount of skepticism. However, you watch it and you decide. We had witnessed some fascinating things at Camel Laird, from light phenomena through strange sounds to poltergeist activity and made contact with spirits that seem unable to shake off their earthly connection with the site. The vastness of the construction hall makes it a truly atmospheric place which none of us would forget easily. Until next time, sleep tight.